It's VHS X. What do you mean? All right, everybody, we're back. We're playing some clown today with the Slipknot mask combo with the Rift Cosmetic. It looks pretty decent, to say the least. Um, and we're on the Yamaoka State. We went with the add-ons for Hindered. We went for one for the size of the pinks. So overall, pretty good. Overall, a pretty solid combo. Now we're using our Spirit Fury Enduring combination, of course. That's how we always do, usually, with M1 Killers. Um, pretty solid throw on my part. Good overall, I would say. Somehow didn't get the hit there. That, that was a little weird. I don't know if it's like if it just kind of aim assisted to the to the bamboo or something, but uh, either way. Now we have Felix kind of in the in the background, so I'm assuming it could be a for the people play or um, like a flashlight. Like who knows? It could be something that could try to uh, intercept our ability here to get it down. So that's yeah. So he's like going in for the body block. I just take a free hit. He just starts wasting a pallet. We'll take it. This is why we love enduring. This is why we love Spirit Fury because we can we just combine the two and make a great combo. Helps us out a lot in chase. Um, especially when maps can just kind of spawn with thousands of pallets. As, as you can see here, like there, this is a jungle gym connected to another pallet up on the outside. So it's good that we have uh, Enduring for that. Now I didn't break the pallet in this situation because I really wanted to uh, just get it down as soon as possible. Um, in most cases you should break the pallet though, just so you have Spirit Fury. But in this situation I really wanted to be uh, very quick. Um, just so I can uh, start applying pressure as soon as possible. Now, we're getting the pick up here. We're going to actually place him in between these two generators because I realized, like, the hook on the hill is too far. If I go around Shaq, that's way too far. We got to go for the center here. Um, but the but the um, the benefit that we had here, because I don't know where they were running to. Because here we just started booking it for some reason towards me. Um, but that's when we start kicking this gen, and then the other gen over there, we also kick that gen. So now we have the half side of the map here that have, like, two gens at, like, 80 to 90%, and we're able to defend it now. Because now we got the hook here that's going to force whoever's working on that gen to go to a different one um, on either one of those gens, really. And then we'll get somebody else to have to come for a save. Now, thankfully, with the base kit buffs, got to say, Clown is a lot better now. I really do enjoy the fact that he can uh, get his, uh, his speed boost a lot sooner. Um, his, uh, bot his more bottles he can work with. Now, I threw the bottle to try to cancel the animation. It just didn't cancel, so I wasn't sure what happened there. Um, and I believe the Felix has off the record, so ideally you just gotta get that free hit in as soon as possible. Um, because of the fact that it's off of hook, it's literally two health states um, for about 80 seconds. So it's a bit unfortunate, but we'll take advantage of that. Now he tries to go backwards to, uh, to try to use the free pallet. That's not how it works. Um, and we were able to get the down very easily. Now, that's usually what you kind of expect with a build like this, and if you're playing very ruthless, aggressively, like a savage, if you will, that's ultimately what you're looking for, getting the downs very quickly, getting the, like especially at the 5-gen uh, mark, um, which people love to complain about, but this is the optimal play, when, as you can see here, um, there's two gens at 99, so there's already one, one that just got done, we get the down, of course, but then right after this gen, um, there's the other one across from it that's about to fly. So, thankfully, Felix gave up. That's good for us. And as you can see, yeah, another gen. So, we're already at three gens, and we barely got, a, like, the first hook. So, if you can kind of take into sort of timing, right? Because if we were playing, you know, a much uh, more, you know, mobile killer, I would assume that the down would have been a little bit sooner. Um, and you could probably get away with, you know, throwing in an extra hook or two. You know what I'm saying? From a different survivor. But... You're, we're playing clown, right? So we have to kind of utilize what we have, right? We have to utilize our strategies. We have to utilize what is frowned upon in this situation. So as you can see, um, and thankfully we got somebody out of the game at the regions, because that's usually the best thing to do is to have somebody out of the game at at, at the regen mark. Um, because if you if you don't, then you kind of end up in a situation where you're gonna fall very very far behind because there's gonna be too many people running around the map and not enough gens to uh, defend. Um, that accurately, especially with an M1 killer. Um, now, we go for this one. She, she got slowed down just enough, so we were able to get the free pickup. And yet, of course, as you expect, second chance. So, um, to be expected, right? So, that's it's, it is what it is. So, that's why we just go ahead and just place our, our pink inside of the, uh, the shack here. We try to fake it to make them, uh, you know, kind of hesitate there. That gives me the opportunity to give her the shack pallet. 
Um, which, if I had broken a pallet sooner, I probably could have actually gotten Spirit Fury to activate there. I actually was trying to throw the bottle through the window, kind of missed there. Um, and if, with that bottle, if I just thrown it higher, it would have landed on the stairs and I would have been a lot stronger. Um, but as you can see, they hesitate, that gives me the opportunity to get the down there. And we know that there's somebody around the area, so we want to make sure we hit them. We also see somebody on the left, they they're hidden or something, but obviously I see you clear as day. Like, come on, bro. Let's, let's, let's really be let's really be smart about this, you know? Um, so, I find that kind of actually hilarious. They have third-person camera, but don't know if they're, like, they hide in these ridiculous spots. I'm like, obviously you can see yourself behind the cover. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway... So I had gone for the swing a little early there. That's kind of my fault there. Probably should have threw the bottle first, slowed him down, because I would have cut off a little bit of the distance. Because um, this map is quite large, so that's why we're having to uh, take the extra time to fly back in. Tried to throw the pink in the path, didn't really reach. Um, but what we tried to do is like drop down um, and uh, try to reach um, the uh, Yui here, which we tried to like force him to drop the pallet. That's why we swung there. Um, so we go through again, they think they're going to start greeting it, it's not how it works, so we just knock them straight down. Um, give them the nod so they understand that they're garbage. And then we just put them on the hook again. And this is one of those situations why, like, one of those matches and one of those situations why I love running Spirit Fury and Enduring on my M1 killers. Um, and I'm not saying that you need to run this on every M1 killer you play, and you have to run it in order to win or anything like that. You can run whatever build you want. I would say run a build that works for you as the player, like, so it really accentuates your strengths. And what you uh, like in your play style. Now, obviously, I play you know very in your face, very aggressively. I would I have to say, so that is my play style. That's what works for me with Spirit Fury, especially because I'm going to uh, not really respect many pallets. We're just going to try to like you know brute force a lot of things um, in order to uh, get our downs and stuff like that. Now, this jungle gym is quite large, so we weren't really able to get the full value out of the pink there, but that's fine. They did mess up their own blind, which is even more hilarious. So that works out for me. Now they're gonna try to uh, like once again go like use that super long range prompt that they get with pallets. So that's why we have our spirit fury and enduring. <laughs> that's exactly why we have it. Um, because then they can't just sit there and use that for free. You know what I'm saying? So that's really good. Um, we got another. I got a new hook on one of the Yui's. We also know the one. They just did a gen in the back. So I figured I could try to drop a yellow around that area. Um, and uh, take a look around. So I decided I would break the pallet so that they can't use that anymore. Um, which, in some cases, you can break it for Spirit Fury. In other cases, I just try to get rid of the pallet in the first place, um, just so that it's not uh, it's not an option. Because a lot of the time, they'll have lives in their back pocket, and then they'll try to use that one pallet that you didn't break at the one point to fly off somewhere else. So that's why we try not to, to uh, always leave the pallets down. Now, as a clown player, you can definitely get a lot of value from having a pallet that's, on, that's down. Um, if you do utilize yellows and pinks in your chases and your uh, tiles and stuff like that, you get a free hit on Jake. Um, you could definitely do that. Um, but because I don't, uh, you know, I haven't, I'm not the one who writ, writ, <laughs> written the uh, 200 page clown guide, obviously. I'm using clown's ability to, you know, to play into my strengths. So they decide to kind of vault, so I figure, all right, well, you're just going to have to just take a look around. Maybe we might be able to find Jake instead. Um, don't want to stay too linked onto that one survivor because I figure that gen speed is still going to outrun, you know, a lot of your downs and a lot of your uh, hits, especially on a map like this that's holding W can be very, very effective, um, especially with the fact that uh, the map is so large and they don't really necessarily have to stay in tiles. Um, which is why I, I can definitely appreciate Clown's ability to slow people down because holding W won't be as effective, and that's something that we really like about Clown. Um, now, I did mess up on the bottle there. I knew it had to be dead hard. I knew it was dead hard. That's why I had to because I remembered. I was like, yeah, if they have DS, they most likely have dead hard. If they don't have dead hard, they most likely have off the record. It's always the same routine of the same copy-pasted perks. You know what I'm saying? So I already knew that. I knew the Yui already, like, I already know that. That's to be a given if you're definitely up and coming with Survivor, and you're, I mean, with, the, with going against Survivors and then you're, you're a killer player, and you notice, like, one DS, you should just assume that everyone has it, or at least assume that everyone has off the record or whatever. Just assume automatically that they all have second chance perks, because that's how it usually goes. That's how it usually goes. Now, I did get the throw through the uh, window there, so I was actually quite glad of that. But like I was saying, 
keep that in mind. You just just assume that everybody's got it because that's just the way to do it. If you see one, there's usually more than one. It's usually, it's usually not just the one person. So that's why we're trying to uh, follow through with this one. They're gonna, of course, go for the vault. So we just vault right after because they do end up staggering. So it does give us the advantage. They think hiding behind me is gonna magically change the outcome. It really won't. So they do fake the vault there, like as if that's gonna change the outcome. It's really not because um, they do get finessed regardless. So. <laughs> They get down as per usual. We just go ahead and take this generator so we can let it regress in the meantime while we attempt to go for the pickup here. Now we're facing a pretty good angle where they wouldn't be able to get the save that easily. Uh, we uh, Using the, the basement is not really like the best option per se. Um, obviously due to the fact that it's it takes a lot of time from the basement all the way up the stairs and then to the next stairs and then from there to go to the gen. But we had to at least take advantage of the fact that we can get somebody out of the game. And then we know that Jake over here is just going to get folded as per usual. We knew that was coming. So, it was, so what I decided to do was leave him on the ground, try to find where the Yui was. So as we ran around to go find the other one, they do pick up the Jake. So we just go after him again. Why not? That is going to be the fun part. So that's why we dropped the pink um, next to that window. So they can't go for a fast vault. They just literally just can't. And they get hindered. Um, I think the add-on actually made it just wide enough where it would actually reach them there. So that does allow us to get a pretty simple down. Now this time around, I actually did go for the hook. I figured that the Jake really didn't take any hooks at all. So it would actually buy me more time to find um, where the Yui went. Because that's the idea. We want to make sure we get a 4K. We really, we, de we definitely, you know, worked. <laughs> worked these, these people, these survivors. Folding them up like paper cranes, you know what I'm saying? So I figure we deserve our 4K. We have definitely did uh, what we needed to do. So that's why we go ahead and just check the back here. Now he does have deliverance, but I figured if this gen is being progressed, I want to take a quick look around. Now we aren't running Cigar Box. It is probably one of the best add-ons you can run on Clown. Probably like a very, very great add-on to run. But obviously as uh, an up-and-coming Clown, you know, main and stuff like that, um... Which I'm more of a ghost face main, but I do consider Clown one of my other mains, you know, very fun. Um, but as an up-and-comer, you know, leveling up Clown and stuff like that, um, we don't I don't necessar necessarily have, like, a bunch of cigar boxes to work with. So we want to hold on to them um, as much as we can because, uh, you know, we don't want to really over-rely on it and then have to not be able to play Clown without the aura reading. So that's why you know, we have to use what we can. So... Of course, here, they did try to fly into a lock and try to dodge a hit. It's not going to change the outcome. Um, of course, they get folded. Now, I figure that um, the Jake more than likely was going to get on the gen again. Um, even with Deliverance, he was going to probably, even if he had it off the record, he was most likely going to get on the generator. I knew, I already knew that we're going to do that. Um, so, as you're going to see here, we see them running to the back of the map. So, I was trying to kind of, like, you know, drop a yellow at least to give me a little bit of more speed. Um, but I, it unfortunately just wasn't in the range to get it. Um, but as you're going to see here, I, I, I assumed he was trying to loop, but no, he's just going to uh, camp in the corner here. So this is what I do, you know. He want, and, and this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Because a lot of the time you'll get people saying, oh, it's, it's always the killer's fault. It's always, it, they're always tunneling, they're always doing this and that and third. But th look at what survivors are doing right now. Like, they're running to the back corners of the map. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can say what you want about a killer's playstyle and, and what they choose to do and how they choose to win, but look at what the survivors have strategies too. Like, <laughs> it's like it makes no sense. And like, survivors have strategies too. You think this is like hiding in the comm corner is gonna magically like, you know, is not a strategy? Oh, they're just they're just doing whatever. They're just playing the game. It, like, come on. Which, as you can see, they just got folded anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I had hit him with the gnome. Like, you're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Especially because of the fact there was a hook there. That's number one. Two, I had yellow bottles. And three, <laughs> I just wanted to max out my uh, deviousness um, by throwing the bottles at him. <laughs> so that's all I really cared about doing. I didn't really care about the other stuff. What the hell he was doing. As you can see, we got it maxed out. And that's kind of what I was going for. And then we just continue to fly on over. Um, you do a little swing there to kind of, uh, to reduce the stagger, you know what I'm saying? Because if you swing out, um, like, if you swing and then, like, outwards, it'll let you land and then you won't have to deal with the, uh, the, uh, stagger. So it'll help you swing a little faster. Could definitely help out, you know? But, uh, yeah, so they tried to put the hatch down there. 
right next to them i had assumed i was like yeah they have to be close because if the hatch is right here they ha it had to be close but the doors are on the other side of the map so this is what i was thinking they're either gonna have to go to that door or they're gonna have to rotate all the way around the map wasting extra time until i spotted them in the distance over there i was like yeah this is what they were doing last time like they're very predictable they were gonna do it again they do the same exact hugging the si sides of the map um, instead of trying to, you know, actually just get away like a, like a smart person. Which is fine. Um, they do have to leave the tile now because there isn't any, uh, there's a, this guy, so I don't know why they're, like, trying to click. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's sad. That's real sad. That is real, real sad. They tried it. They tried it. But there you have it for this gameplay. Now we can go ahead and move on to the next one. But first, we're going to take a look at the build real quick. So as you can see here, they're all running meta. You know, sweaty, sweaty perks as per, as per usual, right? All adrenalines and, de and dead hearts and decisives and windows and all that other nonsense. So now we can go ahead and dive into the next one. We're on Dead Dog Saloon. We got a different knife. We got a different... Um, uh, build here, got Pain Resonance, the, uh, Corrupt Intervention, Grim Embrace, Dead Man Switch. Now, Dead Man Switch is actually, like, kind of decent on Clown because he doesn't have, um, that traversal. So, having that option to, um, uh, be able to, uh, you know, block certain generators, especially when you get in proximity, could definitely allow you to at least catch up to, uh, to some survivors and stuff like that. Um, now, as you saw there, I'm pretty sure it was balanced landing. That's why I threw down like two bottles to make sure that uh, I was able to intercept um, their slowdown enough to uh, buy enough distance. Because um, normally M1 killers may struggle a little bit with that, especially when they just pop a perk every time they get in th and every time they hear chase music. Um, so they tried to like stand on the uh, bar here. Um, I'm assuming to try to act like that's gonna prevent me from getting the pickup. I don't. That doesn't work, <laughs> so because they just flop right over the bar. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool, this is my opportunity. We're just going to go ahead and place them on the pain res, and then that'll also activate Dead Man Switch, depending on the same on the gen. Which, as you can see, um, the Steve was on the generator, and uh, I decided to actually throw a yellow at this wall just to get rid of it, um, to give us a little speed boost so we could fly on over um, and keep us keep ourselves mobile. So now we have Groom Embrace activating. That will more than likely fo like, uh, force them to kind of move in toward the hook. And that will allow me to start trading it out. Which is, which is the idea. Um, now we have Steve here. That's why we want to get a quick hit on him. But keep, uh, keep our eyes on the prize here. We want to make sure we can at least eliminate the mag. Um, from the equation. Because Steve is the only one that's going for the save. That gen is still regressing. So that means that the, we are able to defend the gen. We're able to defend the hook here you know what i'm saying and then we're just trying to um you know keep them you know within proximity and distract them now they didn't go for the save either so that means that only one person's left so that's why we throw the, the pink there to try to um to try to uh, cancel the the uh, animation a little bit about was a little bit early um but ideally um i would have gone for the trade if like, i mean i would have gotten the trade anyway but still so we went for the second pain res just to make sure that we don't uh, lose any other generators in the meantime. Um, you know, you gotta play more safe than sorry in that sense, you know what I'm saying? Especially with a character like Clown that does lack that map mobility, so that's why we then continue to focus on the Meg here. Because we realized, wait, this one went for the save and she's uh, injured. Um, so that's why I throw the yellow down so I can get the, like, the free speed boost. And then we can uh, we can go ahead and zoom on over back to that same hook because you know that gen right next to me is going to be progressed. Um, but I'd realize, wait, let me not use the pain res hook. Let me use the one in front of the of the main building in case they do end up quitting. Um, we won't lose that hook. So now dead man's value. We throw the bottle up there. We got another dead man's value on that as well. So the, as overall, we're doing pretty good here. We got two gens blocked for a good amount of time, so we can pretty much corral them, push them in. Come on, come on in. And we can try to trade out yet again get another hook. You got him. And then this is just the way you do. You start to get control of the match. And this is the way you make them play. Because you got to understand that survivors want them. You know, they want you to play their game. You know what I'm saying? Their game is, oh, hook everyone once and then go right back around to number one again. 
So they like to do that. Like, that's their strategy. Oh, we got to play fair and fun, and everyone has to have a good time. But the only one not having a good time is the killer player, is it not? So, of course, once again, yet another second chance perk. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Who would have guessed, right? As to be expected. But it's a little too little too late, if you ask me. I'll say a little too little too late because uh, I actually kind of stepped back a bit by accident there. But I was trying to actually go around like I did last time. Um, but I think they kind of just waited on the uh, check spot and then just kind of ran off. So I figured we just at least kick the gen in the meantime. Let that regress. And then we try to kind of get an idea where the heck they ran off to. Um, now, that is a bit of a fumble on my part. I should have kind of stayed in the area. Um, and kind of just followed them like uh, like you know, normally as I should have the, the uh, first time. Well, compared to the first time because if you move you know if you obviously if you do a move like once they might end up expecting it again so that's why you have to kind of be better um, than the survivors and actually change it up you know what i'm saying so that being said you get an easy down pretty much we were like all right cool you can use another pain res we already got somebody close to death hook so meg pretty much can't do much at this point um we're also creating a lot of slowdown by uh you know getting people off of gens or blowing up other stuff keeping an eye out Overall, we're doing quite well. Now, I did actually go for the little, like, uh, whatever that is, the other, the yellow add-on I'm using for, like, reload speed. Um, to try to change it up, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to, uh, you know, try out a different add-on, see how that was, because I didn't want to use um, the better ones. So we tried to drop the purple on the hook there. Um, assuming they would heal under hook, they actually did not. But I realized that Kate is actually also another weakling we can take advantage of here. Um, so that's why we tried to keep uh, in line with them. Of course, now we got another one flying into body block, which is good for us, right? That's another free hit. We got another person off the generators. Um, but they're still at four gens. We're, we're creating the maximum amount of pressure. And this is the kind of pressure you want to have, especially as an M1 killer. It's the only way to really play it, um, unfortunately. You have to play like a savage, especially at the high levels. Um, and, and especially if you just win a lot of games, you're going to end up getting tougher lobbies. It's just inevitable. Um, but I realize that this Kate does have off the record because when don't they? Um, or maybe they didn't. So as is what I had thought, you know, because <laughs> they actually did not, um, apparently. But maybe they had Iron Will or something because it was very quiet. So I was, I just kind of assumed like maybe this might be, uh, this might be, um, off the record or something like that. But apparently it was not. But overall, we're creating a lot of pressure here. That's why we're then going ahead and utilizing our yellow to fly on over. We can go ahead and just take a look at this generator, give it a little kick. Um, they had to let go of it. They're trying to, like, you know, try to put in as much as they can before Dead Man's activates, but we're creating a good amount of slowdown. Solid throw on my part to give me some extra distance. I kind of tossed it, assuming they would go for that window, um, but we did end up getting a hit there. Now, what I try to do is I go uh, I go around the other way, assuming, like, trying to listen into um, to the cries of pain to kind of get an idea where they're trying to, trying to head to. Um, so this is what we try to do here. You're going to see that I kind of, uh, you know, caught them there because they didn't really know which direction I was going. Um, and then from there, we was able to get the down very easily. Um, they're actually leaving their teammate on the hook, so that means that we're finally getting somebody out of the game. Um, pretty much at the 3 gen mark, as you should. That is pretty much what I highly recommend, especially um, with an M1 killer. You want to be able to eliminate somebody at the 3 gen mark. Some people say that the 2 gen mark. I say at the 3 gen mark just to be safe because gens can be very fast. So I would assume that you already, um, you know, that you don't even have gens. Um, I kind of play it kind of uh, backwards in that sense, where you kind of play... Um, as if you don't have any gens at all, you know what I'm saying? That like you're about to lose like four of them in a single uh, gen pop, you know what I mean? Like something crazy like that, just to make sure that you really play, you know, how you're supposed to. Now, in order to win, I should say. But of course, you know, Steve uh, kind of made a blunder there, so that gives me the opportunity uh, to get the free hook. Now, I was hoping I would get, I would get access to one of the pain res, but unfortunately we were not really able to reach it. So I figured I'd just put them as close as I can to the pain res. Um, and then we can just break down the wall for the extra points, extra traversal. Hey, do a knock out another gen. That's why I highly recommend getting getting rid of a survivor at the three gen mark because you will most likely lose more if you don't. Um, because there's still a lot of people in the lobby that are able to assist with the generators. So you don't want that to happen. Um, especially because if there's two people on the generator, you're gonna it's gonna be like just half the time. You know what I'm saying? It goes from like I think. Um, 80 seconds to about like 30 or 40 maybe something like that. It's, it's something interesting. It's something faster than I wouldn't say 30, but 
Um, it is definitely quicker. So that's why you want to like, reduce their numbers, makes it a lot harder for the gens to fly. So, obviously. Now, we're trying to go ahead and go after Steve or somebody else because we didn't really spot anyone. Um, but I realized we're actually just going to go ahead and place the uh, yellow up there. Assuming that they would want to drop down. But I wasn't sure what their plan was. I think this was, was uh, oh, okay, yeah, it was the Michaela. It kind of just got folded, so that was unfortunate for them. So we just took them out of the game. And right at the two gen mark, like, like how we need to do, get somebody out of the game as well. So that's already two people out. There's two gens to go. There's probably one going off on, on top of the uh, hangman area. And ideally, what we're trying to do is go after maybe somebody else that's in the area. Maybe Steve was already injured or something like that. We're just trying to get sight of where they are. Now, here's where it gets interesting, to say the least. Because for some reason, like, this wall was open. Like, this whole back area was open. Which I don't... I never broke the wall there. So, I, it just kind of spawned this way. Which mean it, which allowed Steve to just kind of run through it multiple times. And there wasn't really uh, much I could have been able to do there. Because I ran through and I was like, wait a minute, like this, I never opened this. I'm like, what is happening? And then he could just hug the wall and then just rotate back around. Like, you can see how, like, it's just almost essentially a god loop at this point. As you can see, like, he's able to go all the way around multiple times. Like, and I was like, wait a minute, like, I'm trying to, like, see if I can mind game it. But it's, like, it's so easy uh, for him to kind of see where I'm at, but I can't see where he's at. And he can just kind of just run it. Um, so I just kind of left the area like, yeah, that, that does, that just spawned in a weird way. I don't know why it's, why it did that. It doesn't normally, I've never seen it do that. Or at least I've never seen anyone run through there long enough to be able to realize that that was, uh, you know, available to them. That was really strange. But I guess the more you know, right? Now, we go ahead and break the gen because we figure they're in the area. Now, this is the, one of those situations where having the cigar box would have been so useful, to say the least. But we're going to go ahead and move forward. Um, because they definitely, all of them were basically just hiding around the whole game. So I had down the Steve, he just kind of like stayed within this area. And, uh, we're talking almost like five, maybe ten minutes of just like him laying on the ground essentially. Um, or not even being healed or anything like that. The Meg was just hiding the entire game. Um, and it, it really just goes to show the pettiness of Survivor players, I have to say it. You know what I'm saying? There's some... I have to I have to mention some are very petty. So as you can see, um, he, they left their teammate on the ground and essentially bleed out while the game just is, of course, has mechanics to give to give them the hatch every time they're like last one alive, which I find hilarious because uh, when I've ever played Survivor, I don't get the hatch spawn on top of me. But when I'm playing the killer, I magically see it happen every game. I don't know what's going on with that, but either way. <laughs> So he just let Steve die on the hook. I was like, okay, there's no hatch offering. Like, what's what's going on? Um, so I waited by the by the shack, thinking, okay, it should spawn there. That would make sense. It's not there. It it spawns, I guess, in that back corner where the Steve uh, was downed. I guess. I didn't hear it, so I thought, okay, that's weird. Let me check the main. Wasn't there. I don't I don't know what's going on with their spawns. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I checked back. He, I checked the whole map. I checked the whole map. I was like, bro, like, what is happening right now? <laughs> like, what? Oh, my God. But I'm glad I'm concluding it in the video so you guys kind of understand, like, where I'm coming from. Because I ran around the whole map. I was like, okay, I don't hear any humming, no nothing. What's happening? Like, what is going on here? Um, and then you can see I rotated around the whole map. Don't know where it is. I'm like, okay, that, that also is like a, like a bug if you're noticing it uh, with the dead dog <laughs> grass. It's like green when you pass by it. I don't know if that's like a purposeful feature, but you're going to see here to like celebrate and they, they got the hatch. Which, mind you, I was in this area, didn't hear it. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't hear any sound, but also they're celebrating a, a, a free escape from the game. <laughs> okay. All this to say, thank you for watching. You've made it this far. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things for me. Become a member for exclusive content and live coaching on the Discord. Join the Discord. We have the link in the description, probably. Um, join it, accept the rules, and uh, go ahead and submit your gameplays for the um, for the match review, so you can uh, get better at playing uh, whatever killer you want to play. Get better at it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we can all have everyone learn together.
So with that being said, thank you all for making it to this point in the video, and I'll see you in the next one.